By the end of this video, you will be a master at support and resistance. I'm going to be revealing all the secrets that all these gurus have you paying thousands of dollars to learn. Let's get it. Let's get into this. So it's easy, right? You're just going to go to the chart and you're going to see where does price keep bouncing off of it? Where does it keep rejecting off this wall, right? So we have price coming up, hitting the wall, and then we have price coming down on the other side, bouncing off the floor, right? So you just think of it as a ceiling and the floor, right? The ceiling is resistance, the floor is support. So let's just draw some out so you can see it clearly. We're gonna use our rectangle for this. So you can see we're bouncing right here, right? We have re rejections coming off of it. We see we pushed up, came back and retested it, right? A retest is when it, when it breaks through it, comes back and touches the zone again before leaving. So if we just draw this up, now this is a support and resistance zone. You see price came up, we bounced off it a couple times, Bounced off it, rejected, pushed down, we broke through, we came back and retested it. Once we get that retest, then we know this is a valid support and resistance. So let's just draw a couple more and then I'm going to show you a technique that I use and it was taught to find more accurate support and resistance zones. So support and resistance is everywhere. You can just look everywhere and you just see, okay, it's bouncing right here. We broke through, came back, retested it, confirmed it, bounce, bounce, came back, retested it, tried to break through, came back above. This is, this is support and resistance. It just keeps going. This is how the market moves, right? So when we're making higher highs and higher lows, right? These are all support and resistance zones. As long as the higher highs, this is a support and resistance zone. This is a support and resistance zone, right? So that's the way the market moves. So we're always going to have support and resistance being created. We could just keep going. Boom. Bounced off, came through, retested it. Right? Another one right here. Boom. Now remember what I just drew, right? Now let's put that on the charts. We pushed up, came down, pushed up, came down, pushed up, came down, pushed up, came down. So that's just how the market moves, right? So support and resistance is everywhere. Just look at the peaks of the higher highs and you'll already know that you're out of support and resistance. Now, if it's just too crazy and you're having trouble seeing it, right? This is another trick that I don't see a lot of people talk about. All you gotta do is come up here to where the candles are, right? This is your chart. You're gonna come down to the line chart. Hit the line chart. Now it's more clear. Now you don't have to worry about all these wicks and all these bodies. All you're looking for is the line, right? The tips of the line is going to show you where the support and resistance is at. You want to draw your zone where the most tips is happening. We see that this is the highest point that price went. We bounced off it three times. One, two, three. We broke above, came down, and tapped it again. So this is just another way to find out the support and resistance zones if you can't see it clearly on the chart. See right here. Boom. Beautiful zone. One tap, two taps, three taps. Broke through, messed around. So if you're having trouble finding it, use the line chart. There's no, none of that fluff in here. You can see everything clearly. So let's get back to the candlesticks. Okay, so now that we know how to spot support and resistance, let's get into the strategy, right? So basically the strategy is once we break a support or resistance, we come back for a retest and we're gonna enter on this retest. But there's one thing that you need to make sure, and it took me a long time to figure this out, and I never hear no one talking about this. We have an accurate retest, right? A valid retest. Once this wick right here, right? So if we're waiting for price to come down and touch this support, we need this wick, this candle to come and touch the previous higher high or higher low wicks, right? So before we broke through this support and resistance, what was the last higher high wicks, right? So that's this one right here. So once this candle comes and taps this wick, then we know it has accurately came and retested, right? And then that's when we'll be looking to enter. But it needs to come touch this. So if a candle would have came down, like this candle right here, right? Focus on this candle. See how this candle came all the way down here, right? And some people might have said, okay, this is a retest, let's enter, right? No, that's not it. It has to come touch these candle wicks right here. Once it comes, touches it, we got a valid retest. Now we could be looking for our next confluence to enter the trade, but we need to see this to have a valid retest of the support and resistance. I never hear no one talking about that. That shit is very important, or you're gonna be just be getting faked out the whole time. So let's go right on to the next one. So once we broke through this, right? Once we broke through right here, this candle, we would say, okay, what was the last higher high or higher low before we broke through? So that would be these right here, right? These candles right here is the last higher high right here. So we want to see this wick and this wick get tapped, right? But mostly this wick, right? Because this is the last higher high before we broke through. So we need this wick to be touched. And it definitely got touched instantly. So you don't even have to worry about it on this one. But once it gets touched, then we can start waiting for our candle patterns and all of that. 
right? We got a candle pattern, a doji, shoots up. So now let's go look at some cells. Okay, we just move right here to the right and we can see our support and resistance already has its own cell already lined up for us, perfect. So this is our support and resistance. So we wanna say, what was the last higher high or higher low before we broke structure, right? So that would be these candles right here, all of these candles. We need a wick to come and touch that on a retest to enter the trade. So you see we came down, this is not it, right? Because we need to come down and then come for a retest and then we count that, right? So that wouldn't be it because that's just still pushing down. We're still breaking through the structure. So once we come back and retest it with this huge candle and this candle come and touch this wick right here, right? Now we know we got a valid retest and we start looking for our patterns to enter. We got our pattern again, that doji. You've seen something happen over and over. We keep getting dojis after we get that retest, right? Pay attention, bro. I'm about to blow your fucking mind. So once we get that candle pattern that we're looking for, and I'm going to teach you guys all different types of candle patterns, right? As soon as we get that, then we know it's time to enter because we retested it. We made a valid retest and now we got a candle pattern, right? So now we enter the trade and you're going to win that trade. This is very important, bro. We can do it again. So we broke through. Some people might have entered right here, right? They might have entered right here which is kind of valid but it's not tapping it 100 percent if i just zoom in it's almost there but it's not quite there let me take a line put it at the tip of this candle right here you can see this candle is not touching it so we're not ready yet we're not ready yet we need it to come tap so as soon as this candle taps we get another candle pattern which is a hammer right there so you would enter once it closes boom and we're going to get into the entry and all that soon right and then you take your trade and look what happens you hit you a one and nine, right? But with support and resistance, you're not gonna get high risk to reward. And this is why I don't trade it. I trade supply and demand because we can get those high risk to rewards every single time, right? Because if you really look at this, this is a supply and demand trade. That's why you have a huge risk to reward. Because supply and demand, you would draw like this to like this, enter right here, right? It's all that. But we're focused on support and resistance. But sometimes they line up perfectly and you know, it works out. But I just want you guys to really put it in your head that this, Retest needs to come touch this higher high or higher lows wicks. Once it comes and touches it, then we're ready to go down. So I hope you guys really paid attention. Write that shit down. Do not skip that or you're going to be getting stopped out for no reason. So now that we know what a valid retest is, now we got to talk about market structure, right? Because you need to be trading with the trend when you're trading support and resistance. You need to be going with the trend. We're not doing no counter trend stuff. The way you know what direction we're going is, is identifying the higher highs and higher lows. So what are higher highs and higher lows? We talked about it a little bit before. We just go back to our first example. Got a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, right? And then right here, we failed to make a new higher high, right? So that's starting to let us know, okay, price doesn't want to go up no more. So, but we need to wait for a breaker structure to confirm that. So we get this consolidation, which is always good before a uh, breaker structure. So we get consolidation. And then once this candle comes and closes below this right here, once we break structure, right? Then we know that we want to go down. So this was a breaker structure. That lets us know, okay, we definitely don't want to go up no more. So we're going to come up, make a lower high. And then we're going to come break. Lower high, break, lower high. So now we know that we're in a downtrend. So now that we're in a downtrend, we should know, okay, we're only looking for sales because the market moves in three phases. We go up and then we go sideways and then we drop, right? Vice versa the other way. We go down, sideways, and then up. So you can see right here is a perfect example. We were going up, making higher highs and higher lows. We went sideways and doing all this bullshit and then we get a clean break of structure. We're coming down, made a lower high, made a lower low, lower high, lower low, and now we're going down, right? So that you need to know what phase are you in. Are we buying, are we consolidating, collecting orders, or are we selling, right? So once you figure that out, then you know which direction to trade in. So just zoom out and you can see clearly what's happening, right? You can zoom out anywhere on the chart. You can see we pushed up. We pushed up right here. We went sideways for a little bit, messed around, did all this dumb shit, and then we dropped, right? And that's just how the market moves. So you always want to zoom out of your charts because sometimes you can be really zoomed in and think you're seeing the right market and you're not. Zoom out a little bit, see what's going on. Once you identify, okay, we're going up or we're going sideways, we do not trade the sideways at all, right? That's, you're just going to get stopped out. So we're only trading uptrends or downtrends. So once you figure out what trend you're in, now you know what to look for. You're going to wait for that support and resistance and then you're going to wait for the wicks to come and tap the previous higher, higher highs or higher low wicks and then we know, okay, this is a valid retest. Now let's go over candle patterns that you want to enter on. So one candle you're always going to see is this doji right here. This doji right here lets you know that 
sellers are in the market it doesn't know what to do because a whole bunch of selling pressure just hit now we're confused we don't know what to do this is a signal to let you know that we're probably going to switch market trends right because the buyers pushed it all the way up here and the seller said nope hell no this is my block right here you're not finna come hit this block we pushed them all the way down right now they're trying to run away now the buyers are running away the sellers are taking over so this doji right here is very important just look at it wicks on both sides small body in the middle it's a doji candle. This just lets you know it's indecision, right? They don't know what to do. The sellers came in too strong. They were unexpected. Now it's posing like this, and most likely the sellers are going to come take over. So I just put one of our examples in replay mode to show you exactly how you would do it in a live trade, right? So you're waiting. Price comes down. Break structure. So now we're getting a break of structure. Now we know, okay, we should be getting ready for a retest. Okay, boom. Now we're pushing down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the line chart. Okay, the line chart, I'm looking at it. We have touches right here, right here, right here, right? So let's go back to the candlesticks. Make sure That was just to make sure our, our support is accurate, right? We're going to get a line. We're going to draw it at these wicks right here, right? The last higher high or higher low wicks before we broke structure. So now we're waiting for a retest on this red line. So we can move this up just to make it a little bit more clear. Let me change the color of this. So we're waiting for that to get touched. Boom, got touched right there. And now we're saying, as soon as it gets tapped, we're saying, okay, now we need a doji, bearish engulfing hammer, or some candle patterns to happen right here. So since right here, we got a doji, right? So once we see this and it closes, right? The candle closes, you would be ready to enter. Stops above, and we're gonna go for a one to two. Now the bad thing about support and resistance is that you can't get these huge risk to rewards. Sometimes you can, but most of the time you're gonna get a one and two, right? And, and just be happy with it, take your money. Take this across. Boom, TP was hit, right? And that's literally as simple as it gets, bro. You wait for the support and resistance to be broken. You want it to come retest the previous higher, higher, higher low wicks. Wait for your candle to form or candle pattern and then enter that trade, stops above, go for a one and two. Now this trade obviously went for it more, one and three, right? But most of the time, one and twos are gonna hit. And that's why I don't trade this strategy no more. This shit does work, but my supply and demand strategies that I teach in my advanced course, next level, bro, we're hitting one of fives, one of sevens, one of eights every damn time. So that's the reason why I don't trade this, but it does work. And if we just fast forward it, let's see how it played out. Let's see the risk to reward you could have got, right? So now this was a huge drop. So that's probably some news. Yeah, it's 530. So that's probably some news. That's why you got that huge drop. But support and resistance does work, but supply and demand just works better.